Hey everybody, happy Tuesday, and now I'm in a very bizarre place. It's not our normal hangout, is it? What is this? It's my new home office, and I got everything situated so that I think I'll, I'm will i going to try to be able to film. And then you all, if you send me things to my P.O. box, you can see it up on my wall, and I will post all of your wonderful, beautiful drawings, as well as cards, and all sorts of goodies that I get. So it'll be on my desk, and you can see it here. Um, so let me know what you think. If you like it, let me know. Okay, and if it's Tuesdays, it's at katiemorton.com. I'm on Tumblr. So if you asked your questions using the hashtag KatieFAQ, I've already gone through and answered a bunch of them. So I'm trying to get better at doing that. I know it just takes a lot of time and sometimes it's hard, but know that I'm on and I'm doing my best. Um, but I have four today, so we got to get rolling. As well as the journal topic, because a lot of you, I did a, a mandala journal topic a long time ago, and everybody loved it and liked the art stuff. And so I have another art journal topic thing to get you going. So... Without further ado, question number one. Hey Katie, I found that journaling really helps me organize my thoughts and feelings, but my mother has been caught reading my journal on multiple occasions, unapologetically. Ugh. No matter what I do, she keeps finding it and invading my privacy and makes me want to stop journaling, even though it's really beneficial for me. Help! So, there are a couple things. Obviously, you're already trying the number one thing. Hide it. Hide it somewhere real, real good. But if they keep finding it, the next best thing and the wonderful thing about um, online things and the fact that we have such great technology is that there are actually sites that are password protected. Make your password really weird. Don't make it anything anybody would know. Don't make it your dog or your old address or something generic. Make it like, I don't know, sugar pie 27 holy water. Doesn't make any sense. No one's ever going to think of that. So give it a crazy password. Open it up online. Even You can even do it in Google Docs if you create... If you have a Google account, a Gmail account, you can go in there and you can create a drive, it's called, it's just like in your Google Docs, you can find the little triangle under your drop down that goes for like your Google Plus and all that stuff, and that's where you can create a document, and that's all password protected too because you have to get into your Gmail. The one thing about all of these is every time you're done journaling online, make sure you sign out. Make sure you get rid of, you know, clean your cookies, get rid of that. So there's no way for anybody to find it because then your privacy is upheld. And I've heard from a lot of my clients that that's really helped. I've only had actually one client that had a very similar thing happen like this where their mom would just keep going into their journal reading things even though they told her not to. So they started doing it online. And I know for some of us, writing by hand is much more cathartic, but typing can do it too. And at least then you're still getting to vent what's going on, you're getting to talk about and have your own process about your life. Okay, I hope that helps. Question number two, hey Katie, what if it isn't your first go around? Like what if you've seen what admitting things does to your family and now that you're supposed to be better, you can't tell them you're not? I hear this from a lot of people um, and it can be really difficult, right? Because we feel the judgment, we feel ashamed a lot. Some of my clients have said they feel really embarrassed. I've had another um, longtime follower of, me, of mine having trouble with this and the best thing I can think of to do is to have an honest conversation with them about expectations and about it being a process and not perfection. And if there's a video of mine you'd like to have them watch, I know I've talked about this a lot. Um, even in an old video, I think I have something about like uh, why you know why is relapse okay or is relapse okay? Because dealing with mental health issues, as is, you can even compare it to cancer, okay? Because it's kind of like that, like our body, our brain is just, it's wired differently. We have a different set of, you know, neurotransmitters in the way that our brain is firing every day. And we're working to shift things slowly and it takes time. And just like cancer can do, it can come back sometimes. And we can get really stressed out and we can get weak and we kind of forget our tools. And so it can get worse. Or sometimes things get really stressful. We're going to new school. We have a boyfriend broke up with us. We have all these things changing and we're so overwhelmed that it gets worse and it comes back. And it's something that we need to talk about so that our parents and our family are aware of the fact that when we're working on mental health issues, we're, we're always a work in progress, right? If we're actually doing the work personally, there's always something for me to work on. There's never a time where I'm like, oh, everything is just hunky-dory because I still say should more than I need to, and I still do things that I'm not supposed to do, and I try to get better, right? And we're all trying to get better, but I think having this conversation with our family and letting them know that things 
make it better and then they make it worse. Then they make it better and they make it a little worse. And letting them know that overall we're tracking up, but it's going to take time and it need they need to understand and be patient with the process so that you can be open about where you are. Now, I know it's really hard to have that conversation, but the more open we are, the more they understand it, right? And if any of you have tips and tricks about how you've managed this, can you let us know? Because I know a lot of us out there are struggling with this. Okay, question number three. Hey, Katie, I was wondering how you try and stop suicidal thoughts. Because I've tried distraction and talking about it, but it's constantly there and I can't get rid of it. I self-harm nearly every day and I'm in a cycle of it now. Any ideas? Thank you. You don't need to stop suicidal thoughts. And I know a lot of you are like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But we don't have to try and stop our suicidal thoughts. It's not about that. We're not thought stopping. The thing that I always encourage my clients to do is let me know what their thoughts are. Let me know how long they last. Are they actually making plans? Are they scared of their own suicidal thoughts? Are they planning to commit suicide? Those are things to be aware of. Call your hotlines, call your therapist, reach out for help. No one is alone in this. I know it can feel like we're alone and we're hopeless, but trust me, you're not. Just be aware. Now, Having the thoughts is, is something that happens for many of us. It's something that comes along with our you know, deep bouts of depression and things that we go through. And I find not trying to stop them, but talking about them more is actually more helpful. Now I know it doesn't sound like the right thing to do, but when we just try to stop things, it often I often find with my clients, it makes it worse. Then they can't stop thinking about it. And it's like all they think about all the time. And so if we stop trying to stop the thoughts, and we begin speaking about it, processing it, thinking about where it came from. Why are they worse today than they were yesterday? And then, sorry, my fax machine is ringing. It's okay, just let it go. Just let it go. But anyway, so if you don't stop trying to stop them, then it can actually get better because we're actually talking about it in a real way. Am I right? Okay, question number four. Sorry, I'm in the office now, see? So I gotta figure out all this stuff, all the noises. Question number four, is it possible to go into therapy even if you're happy? Do you have to be going through an illness to have therapy? No, of course you can go into therapy if you're happy. I'm in therapy. I think therapy is great. It's a great place, to be honest, to just start talking about what's going on, venting about your bad days, reveling in your good. It's nice to get some, for me at least, I enjoy getting the feedback from someone who only knows what I tell them. They're not biased in one way or another. They don't know... Like my therapist, Jana, she doesn't know anything that I don't tell her. She doesn't know about everything in my past unless I decide to tell her about it. And so I'm learning about myself as I decide to talk to her more and share things with her. And I don't have to be going through something right then and there and be feeling really shitty and feel like I'm at the end of my rope to get help. It just helps to talk about it. It helps for us to feel like we're in it with someone else and we're getting support just for our lives, for being us. Life can be stressful, am I right? So there's nothing wrong with feeling like everything is fine and you're happy, but you just like to talk to someone because it can just really help. So yeah, don't have to be down and out. You don't have to be really struggling to get help. You can be happy and just want to work on yourself because we all have, you know, we're all works in progress, right? Okay, journal talk. Now, this is kind of a cool idea and I found it on Pinterest, so things you can find on Pinterest. Make a cutout of your hand in either construction paper or cardboard and fill it in with little bits of words or parts of stories that your hand could tell. What it's overcome, maybe if it has calluses or scars, things that it has done, maybe it's built things, maybe you've written things, maybe you've drawn things, maybe you play an instrument. Tell us the story of where your hands have been. You can do both because I actually find that there's too many words and things I can't fit it in because I have small Polish hands. So. Anyway, um, I thought that would be really, really cool and really great, and I'd love to see them. You can put them on cool colored paper or printed paper or anything you want. So take pictures and show me. I'll see you all tomorrow on the website. So ask your questions on katiemorton.com or on YouTube under this, under today's video using the hashtag katiefaq, and I'll find them, and I'll see you then. Bye!